heat sensing is done using infrared cameras. So question from Sir Tia. That's true. You can have different kind of thermal sensors, which will give you the heat signature. Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, let's continue. Uh, we will talk maybe just five to 10 minutes, just the intro part, and then we'll cover the rest of the lecture uh, uh, next week. So this is about uh, basics of linear algebra. And we are going to talk about vectors, uh, matrix, and different transformations which we can perform uh, on these matrices and how this is relevant for computer vision or image processing. And then we will close off with singular value decomposition, which is a very important topic. We will not go into depth, but I think you should have the general idea like why this is important. Okay, so question from uh, Abhishek, will the IR camera depend upon the distance for giving good heat signatures? Of course it will. That's true. Okay, sharing lecture two. Let me quickly do that. I just put this uh, put this uh, in in the chat. You should have access to this. All right. Uh, so you can still see my screen, right? Just making sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's talk about vectors. So first of all, scalar scalar is just like uh, one number. It could be like from uh, real uh, from this domain and a vector is just set of these all right so scalar is just one item but vector will have multiple items and what uh, it's representing here is n is like how many items you have in your vector and you can have two different type of vectors the first is a row vector and you can see here the shape of this it's one cross n so one is corresponding to like how many rows you have n is like how many columns you have so if it's just one row, you call that a row vector. And similarly, you can have a column vector where you have number of elements like in each row, uh, and then you just have a one column, all right? So this is like a, a row vector where you will have different items in this vector. Similarly, you can represent that as column. We have a operator which is called transpose. So if you transpose your row vector, you will get a column vector. If you transpose your column vector, you will get your row vector. So th these are just basics. Uh, I'm assuming you all should know this just to uh, brush it if you have forgotten. Okay, so let's see why vectors are important. So we, we need vectors to store uh, data in memory. All right, so for example, if you are loading your image then computer needs to store that image somewhere right so image is the data which you will store in matrices we'll talk about that later but vectors are also used for uh, storing data so you can use vectors uh, for storing feature vectors which are usually like one dimensional all right you can use vectors to store the pixel values of your image or any other data which you need like uh, to process uh, in your algorithm so some very, very basic examples of this is like a coordinate system. If you have a point in your coordinate system, you can use vector to represent it. For example, if you have a three-dimensional space, right, you have X, Y, and Z, and you have a point in this, uh, in this vector space. So the location of this point is X1 in X direction, X2 in Y direction, X3 in Z direction. So what you can do is you can put like all these three values in a vector. Okay, so this is a vector and this vector represents this point. 
you can also use a vector to represent distance between two points in the same space okay it's just uh, it's not just about representation of uh, these two points so for example you have another point in the same space again y1 y2 y3 y1 is like distance in x direction y2 is distance in y direction y3 distance in x direction that's the second point so the distance between these two points will be this vector right starting from here until this point so this is vector calculus so you can easily just subtract like these elements it will be x1 minus y1 x2 minus y2 x3 y3 so this vector here uh, represented by green color again you can use a vector for that okay so now let's see uh quickly go over like what are the different operations which can be used in vectors the most important is norm we will use this a, a lot like when we uh, work in deep learning we develop our models okay so norm uh, it's called p norm the most uh, popular form and this is the equation so let's try to understand this what's happening so p norm is let's say you have n different elements in your vector right you will take the absolute value of each element and raise it to power p because it's p norm and then you will compute that number for all the elements in the vector and just add them up all right and after adding you will take this power one over p so this formulation is called p norm so this is a very general formulation and of course you can have euclidean norm which is uh l2 norm also called also known as l2 norm so you just replace p with the two Right, you just take square of each element, sum those, and then take the square root. So this is called uh, L2 norm and also called Euclidean norm because this is like if you have a Euclidean space, this is kind of a Euclidean distance between two points, right? And similarly, you can have L1 norm and you must have guessed like if it's L1 norm, you just replace P with one. So you just take the absolute value and sum all these values. All right, and one over one will be one so just ignore that part so question from uh, shibo normalization yeah you there is no normalization here okay Yes, L1 norm is, it's just a one number. So it's kind of like giving you the magnitude, the magnitude of the vector. And there are different variations. You can compute the magnitude in different ways. Okay. So the other interesting operation is our inner product. Let me see how much time we have left. All right, so I think probably the last slide. So inner product, it's also called a dot product. And again, it will give you a scalar number, just one number. And what you do is you multiply corresponding entries and then just add those up, okay? So for example, if you have a vector X, you have a vector Y, right? So by default, when I say a vector Y, it will be a column vector, okay, for future slides. So if I say x, it's a column vector. So that's why we'll have to take a transpose. So it becomes a row vector. And y, again, another vector. This is a column vector. So when we take a dot product, what we do is we place them like this. And again, this is kind of a matrix multiplication. We'll talk about that when we talk about matrices. So what we do here is we just multiply the corresponding elements. So x1 is multiplied by y1, x2 is multiplied by y2, so on and so forth. And we just add those values. So this is called a uh, dot product. Okay. So one uh, restriction here is like the length of these factors should be identical. So you should have n elements in this one, n elements in this one. Otherwise, they are not compatible. Okay. So this dot product is pretty useful. Uh, again, we will see later on. Uh, the other is again it's a uh, it's between two 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 uh, pair of factors. It's called inner product. Okay, I think it's still inner product. And so you can see here that if you take inner product 
uh, using the same vector, right? You don't have two different vectors. So that's kind of squared norm of x1, right? Because you you just multiply this, uh, you just multiply like the element with itself and that will give you a square, right? And it's a square norm because you don't have the square root. In L2 norm, you have a square root as well. So you don't have that, that's why it's squared. So if you can compute inner product between the same vector, it will be squared norm. So it's the same thing which you covered in the last uh, slide, still dot product. So another representation of, uh, this is really important and we will use this later on as well. So dot product is also represented as this X dot Y. And you also say like magnitude of X, magnitude of Y, and then cause of angle between X and Y because X and Y are vectors, right? So whatever angle you have between these two, you take co cosine of that and just use magnitude. So this will also give you the dot product. So let's try to understand this. So this is a more intuitive and I think a better explanation for a dot product, which is used like a, a lot. So for example, if you are taking dot product between two vectors and one of them is unit vector. So for example, if we compute A dot B, and B is a unit vector. Unit vector means its magnitude is one, all right? So if its magnitude is one, in this equation, you can see that you can just ignore this. It will be one, right? So you can ignore this. It just becomes magnitude of X and cos of this angle. And by looking at these two vectors, so this is vector B, this is vector A, and B is a unit vector. This is the angle between these two vectors. Now, if you compute magnitude of a cos of theta, it gives you this distance, all right? And this distance is called projection of a on b, right? When you project like this is a perpendicular, you draw on b. So a cos theta is exactly this distance. So it's called projection because it's telling you how much is the magnitude of a in the direction of B, all right? And that's why it's called projection. Similarly, you can have another vector which is perpendicular to B in this direction, then projection of A on that will be this side, right? Whatever that angle is, A cos that angle, let's say it's alpha, so that will be the projection. And that's how your Cartesian system works. And that's why if you compute the coordinate of this uh, point A here, it will be like this distance, in this axis and this distance in y axis. So, and then you say like x comma y right, in your Cartesian uh, coordinate system. So uh, keep in mind this, like uh, this uh, projection, it will be used uh, later. Okay, so I think uh, let's stop uh, it here and we can um, cover this outer product maybe in the next lecture. So we have a couple of other uh, items here to cover. So any questions so far? So question from iPhone. So I don't know what your name is. Norm is square root of inner product. Norm is uh, norm is square root of inner product. Like if you compute the inner product between the same vector, right? Inner product with the, with, with the vector itself. So it will be the norm. That's true. So question from Sayed. What is the application of LP norm? So LP norm, that's a, a general uh, definition and you can replace P with all those values, right? You can have one, two, you can have infinity. So even infinity norm is, uh, I think, are very useful. So in that form, it's pretty useful. So later you will see like when you develop your networks, you have to compute some loss, uh, loss and all those things. So you need to, uh, you need to maybe normalize your normalize your data. So then it will be pretty useful. Okay. It will be hard to say now because I don't think whether it will it will be beneficial to discuss that at this point. Okay, how do we use it and and where? So for example, so 
I think we, we are going to cover that later on. So right now, just understand, okay, this is the uh, definition of LP norm and what it means and how it's used, where it's used. We're going to talk about that. Question from George, what is the first homework going to be about and when it is due? So as I said last uh, in the last lecture, uh, this week, we won't be having any homework. It will be just like that uh, dummy homework, which you have to do if you are receiving any financial aid. Otherwise, there might be some issues. So we will release the first homework next Thursday after the fourth, fourth lecture, and it will be due uh, the following Monday. So question from Sayed, is it used for the minimization of error in the predicted values? Yeah, that, 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 that's just one use, right? So as I said, I mean, it will not be right to discuss that because you're talking about minimization. We haven't covered that topic. And you're talking about like computing errors in the predicted values. So we have a lecture for that. Maybe if you're interested, you can come to like one of the office hours and then we can discuss uh, this in detail. Okay, Sayed? Shay okay, great. So yeah, we are almost out of time. If there is any last minute question, uh, please let me know. Other, otherwise we can end it here. And of course you can email me, you can join the office hours if you have any further questions, any doubts, all right? Let's end it here. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day.